You want to build a racing quad? Me too. So, hey, let's do it. <laughs> this is CPO. Those of you who have been uh, hanging out with me for a while or following my YouTube channel or following me on Facebook know that I've been very interested in getting into the FPV racing scene and in particular the uh, 250 size little mini quads uh, seem to be the hot ticket right now and I've been looking at them trying to figure out how to get involved talking with some other people and uh, so I got into a conversation with uh, the guys over at ReadyMade RC and uh, they hooked me up with a kit that they are positive I'm gonna love so I'm going to show you how I'm building my 250 size racing quad, what I'm putting in it, how I'm putting it together, and I'm also going to give you a cost breakdown. That's one of the probably the more popular questions I get on my build videos, particularly with the multi-rotors, is what's the parts list and how much did it cost? So you're going to get uh, a little bit of that information in this video. This is the introduction video to kind of show you uh, what I'm going to be putting together. Now, some of these are new uh, to market items. I know in particular the motors and ESCs are new to ready-made RC, and they're fairly new to market altogether. And so uh, I'm excited to uh, have an opportunity to check those out. And then uh, I'm putting together um, very common uh, budget-minded build. So uh, you know there are ways to spend an absorbent amount of money in building an FPV racing quad. And I'm trying to uh, make that balance between super awesome yet not breaking the bank. So because of that, you'll see some fairly common uh, components as well as um, some with a little bit of a history in the FPV racing scene for being uh, high performers. So let's get started. First off, I'll tell you the frame choice for this build is the Drone Frames DRQ250, also commonly known as the Mini D. Now I'm building the G10 version of this frame. They also have a carbon fiber version. I'm building G10 for a couple of reasons, and you need to know this. Number one, it's quite a bit cheaper. It comes in at 85 bucks uh, from a ready-made RC for the G10 frame. The uh, the carbon fiber one is is uh, you know quite a bit more expensive than that, but I know that there are a lot of guys who love carbon fiber just all out. One of the reasons why I think that the G10 is going to be better for me, number one, it is not that much different in weight than the carbon fiber. If you look at the the weights of the two, um, you're not taking a huge hit on weight, which I know a lot of people assume carbon fiber is going to be lighter. But in this case, it's really not that much of a difference. So uh, that compared with price also. Then uh, the fact that it's RF transparent. Carbon fiber uh, will uh, block RF signals. So your FPV video and your uh, transmitter uh, control has the potential of getting a little bit of blockage just in your own flying because your craft's going to get in the way. We see this a lot in helicopters. Uh, that are mostly carbon fiber framed. Uh, we see a little bit in airplanes, not so much. But on these little mini drones, uh, you got to think they're flying at an angle oftentimes uh, or around trees or, you know, at eye level. So uh, I'm just looking to avoid uh, as much opportunity for interference as possible. So that's helpful. Um, it's not the only thing. If all else was equal, price was equal, uh, weight was equal, all of that, um, I'm not so sure RF transparency is going to make my decision for me, uh, but it is a nice uh, thing. And then as well as the fact that it's non-conductive, G10 does not conduct electricity the way that carbon fiber does, which means um, you know, I don't have to worry about uh, electronic components being mounted directly to the, uh, the G10 frame like I would with a uh, carbon fiber frame. So anyway... Uh, but primarily, it's it's less expensive, and uh, and it does offer several benefits over carbon fiber. The only the only thing that carbon fiber wins out on, honestly, is weight. But it's by a minuscule amount, not even enough to really worry about. So, anyway, that's what I'm going with. The uh, drone frames 
DRQ250, it's a proven performer in this class of uh, multi-rotor. Now, another thing I'm going to be putting on there, which is interesting to me, uh, and uh, and I'm excited to play with this, are the RMRC, ready-made RC prints. It's kind of this line of 3D printed parts that they have. Uh, it's a DRQ250 10-degree motor mount. So what this will allow for is the motors to be tilted forward at 10 degrees. Now, why do we do that? Well, um, because when you're flying and you're moving forward, you're tilted forward. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, somewhere between, you know, 10 and 45 degrees the way some of you guys fly, I've seen. But the problem is, uh, you know, when you have your camera mounted flat, you, uh, you know, and then you get into forward flight and you tilt down, now your camera's looking at the ground. So uh, some of the benefit of this is that uh, it gets the frame back to being uh, level and the motors are tilted. And then that way your camera view um, will, uh, you know, give you a right, you know, view forward. Now, the downside of that is when you're taking off and landing, you're actually going to be looking <laughs> um, at the sky for a little bit, you know, when you're in a hover. Uh, but when you're moving forward, you'll be looking in the right angle. Now, you could say, well, why don't I just put the camera at 10 degrees. And I asked that same question, right? If you put the, the camera at 10 degrees, you end up with the same result from a camera perspective. But the other thing, the other benefit of the 10 degree motor mount is uh, you reduce a little bit of drag uh, in your flight, right? Because when your motors are tilted, your frame's not tilted. When your frame's tilted, um, you're, you're providing more frame surface area to, uh, to your airflow which is gonna be a little bit draggy. So in theory, this should uh, give you a little bit of a performance edge. And I know a lot of the popular frames, uh, commercial frames are coming out with 10 degree motor mounts. So I'm willing to give it a try. It's not a necessary thing. I know tons of people who fly without tilted motors, but it does seem to be uh, a popular option for the FPV mini racers. So uh, these are 30 bucks. Uh, I know it feels like a little bit expensive for motor mounts, um, but they are, uh, you know, they're they're high quality 3D printed, comes with all the hardware, even comes with a bubble level. And I'll talk a little bit about that when I get into the build. It does require uh, for your uh, setup for your flight controller, just a little bit of a method because uh, you've got to you've got to now level it at a 10 degree level. So your flight controller knows where level is. So we'll talk about that more later. But uh, that is uh, is that. The next thing we have uh, the motors. These are Emacs MT two two zero four. These are twenty three hundred kV motors. Now the Emacs uh, MT series motors are uh, are very popular in this class, and these MT twenty two zero fours are a fairly recently uh, newly released motor, and uh, they're going to have quite a bit of power for their size, low center of gravity, lightweight. Uh, and uh, they're not breaking the bank. These guys are coming in at $16.99 a piece, and uh, so four of those, that's not bad at all. So I have two that are designed to be rotated counterclockwise, and then two that are designed to be rotated clockwise. And uh, it, basically the difference between the two motors, clockwise versus counterclockwise, is the, uh, the propeller shaft is threaded uh, one way or the other. And the reason being is that if you have your motor spinning uh, in a clockwise fashion, you want your threads to screw on such that the natural tendency is for the prop nut to get tighter, not looser, uh, because of that movement. Now, this is debatable on whether or not it really matters. If they only came out with one direction, uh, say clockwise rotating, uh, you know, who cares? I mean, you use the motor wires to change the direction of the motor by reversing any two motor wires. So uh, you can make a motor turn in any direction you want, uh, but it is kind of a cool benefit to have the thread set just so that uh, you don't have to worry about it. Now, if you're using nylocks or uh, I use thread lock on a lot of my builds uh, to keep the, uh, the prop nut in place, you're probably not going to have a problem, but it is a nice touch. And why not take advantage of it? So I have two clockwise, two counterclockwise. And, uh, and I'll show you uh, when I get into the build, for those of you who are confused on how to know which one's which and where to put it, um, I'll go over all that in the build. 
For the ESCs, again, this is fairly new uh, to market. These are Simon Series 12-amp ESCs from Emacs. Now, these aren't Simon K ESCs. They don't have Simon K firmware. I believe it's based on Simon K firmware, uh, but not exactly uh, Simon K. So the name may be a little bit misleading if you, uh, if you just look at it at face value. But these are you know, super lightweight, 12-amp ESCs, and they are built to run on these little 250 quads. So, and the price is, is great at $8.99 a piece. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, all right, for the flight controller. Flight controller of choice on this build is the Acro Naze 32. Uh, it comes at $25. Bucks, and uh, the reason the Acro Naze 32 uh, is being used in this build is it is an all-round... Uh, great mini-sized flight controller, super simple, super lightweight, small. I mean, it's literally just a, you know, PC board. So the Acro has some limited functionality over the full NACE 32. For example, it doesn't have the barometer or the ability to add a GPS sensor, but who cares? I'm doing FPV racing. I want the thing as light uh, and nimble as possible, and I don't really need the telemetry capability. Now I am going to work on adding voltage telemetry uh, to my uh, setup, and I'm going to be doing that with a FreeSky uh, receiver. And uh, so the FreeSky receiver has telemetry capability that I'll be using. I'll get into that a little bit more later. That's not being covered in this video. I kind of consider the FPV gear and the the receiver sort of add-ons uh, to this whole thing. So, uh, but anyway. Uh, so I'll be working on getting voltage telemetry through that, and the Acro Naze will do that just fine. Anyway, $24.99 from ReadyMade RC. And uh, by the way, all of the links to these products uh, will be in the video description. So if you want to see exactly what it is I've got going on, uh, I'll make it easy for you. Now, I am adding on the Naze 32 case for this. It's uh, $9.99. It's a uh, you know printed uh, 3D printed case for these boards, and it's a great way to just protect the board uh, because I know I'm going to be crashing, and so you may as well protect the brain of the unit. It doesn't add any weight really. It's super lightweight, and uh, just gives it a little bit of protection. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. But if you're trying to save cash, you know you get rid of that. That's ten dollars. Uh, maybe you uh, you kill the uh, uh, the motor mounts, and that's another 30 So you just save 40 bucks off your build just by knocking those two unnecessary but uh, cool things to have. So anyway, uh, as far as props, I've got two different types of props. These are 5 by 3 props. And, of course, you've got the counterclockwise and the clockwise direction uh, facing props for the, for the uh, quadcopter. The GemFam uh, plastic props are just a great all-round choice. Uh, and actually, I'm going to start out using those. They're only $3.19 for four of them. So an entire set of props for 3 bucks, and uh, I can test and tune and crash and destroy on those things. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to go to uh, after that will be the carbon fiber props. Now, the carbon fiber props are just a little bit more expensive. So if you're looking to save cash, if that's your goal, you know, you can stick with the uh, the standard uh, gym fan uh, props. But the carbon fiber props are going to be a little bit stiffer. Actually, they're a lot stiffer and, uh, you know, should give you a little bit more performance. So anyway, uh, starting out with the plastic standard gym fan, uh, great all-round props. And then, um, then I'll move uh, finally to the carbon fiber ones. And then last, I'll talk about the batteries. These batteries are from... Uh, Ready-made RC. They're their orange series lipos. I've got a 3S and a 4S. I'm probably going to fly 3S, but I kind of want to try 4S uh, on this setup. These are 35C lipo packs. They're both 1300 milliamp, and they're super cheap. I mean, 15 bucks for a 3S 35C that is made, uh, uh, you know, for Ready-made RC and shipped by them here in the U.S. So if you're in the U.S., it makes it convenient because sometimes getting batteries around here uh, seems like a, a challenge. So really, guys, that's it. Uh, this is what the build's going to be, and I'm excited to dig in. I'm going to go through step by step. I'm going to try and find that happy balance between too much detail, uh, you know, not having too much of it, but also giving you enough detail that if you're new, you're a beginner, this might be your first build uh, that you're considering looking at. I'm going to help you figure out how to get things going.
uh, and you'll be able to see how I do it. And this is my first uh, mini quad build, too. So I'm going to learn some stuff along the way as well. So I hope you enjoy the series, and uh, hopefully it won't take me too long. It just depends on how much time I have available, and that changes day to day. Uh, but I'd like to thank ReadyMade RC. Big shout out for them. Uh, for uh, hooking me up with this review kit so that I can show you um, how to build a racing quad. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.